In today's reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hoffmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Laying the Foundation. That's Book 1, Chapter 4, Section 4. One Universal Goal. David, I was always taught that it is good to be goal-oriented. By the time I finally got to the course, I was thinking, being goal-oriented, that is a bunch of baloney. All those goals were specific, and they were all based on the self-concept. That is where all form goals spring from. It can be thought of as an aquarium with the little pump at the bottom that blows the bubbles and pumps the air into it. The bubbles that seem to come up and float up to the top and pop on the surface are like all the specific goals. Make more money, get this, get that, develop these skills, do this and do that. That is the pop, pop, pop. Those are all the bubbles. The important thing is to question the little thing generating the bubbles. I finally came to the point in my life where I thought, I'm going to finally get down there to the generator and question the mechanism the bubbles seem to be coming from. Friend, so all specifics come from a self-concept? David, yes. Lessons 24 and 25 in the course address this very directly. Does that mean we should not have any goals? No. No, no. The course is not advocating that. The course is advocating you should have one goal and only one goal. And that goal is abstract. It is universal. And it does not have a specific reference. What does that mean? It is not quantifiable. It is not measurable. It is a goal of purpose. It is not a specific goal. It is not a goal with X amount of dollars or a better job or better physical health or a warmer climate or a better looking mate or all the specific goals that keep popping up here on the surface. This universal goal has to be learned very carefully because the mind can only think in terms of specifics. That is what it prays for all the time. Its prayer is its desire. It is always praying for specific outcomes. Even when you have the thought, gee, I am hungry. Something specific comes to mind that would seem to satisfy that hunger. When you seem to have to go to the restroom, it pops into the mind where the restroom is. And you seem to go and urinate and it seems to satisfy that momentary, temporary need. Those are all answers to prayers. Going to the bathroom is an answer to the prayer. Having a Dorito chip is an answer to prayer. Having sexual intercourse with someone is an answer to prayer. Going for a walk on a sunny day is an answer to prayer. 
everything on the screen is an answer to prayer. It is just bringing witness to what the mind wants and also what the mind believes will answer that want or satisfy that want. That is what makes up the surface. The key is to see that all these splintered desires are part of the self-concept bubbling away down there. It is what is sending all these bubbles up. The only way out is to have a single unified goal. To bring it to the point that my desire is single. I want only God and nothing else. If you think of the center of the mind as being like an altar, it is like saying, I want to remove everything on the altar except God. God cannot be on a defiled altar. He cannot be on something that is made unclean. You cannot put pure sauce on a dirty altar, on a split altar. All the spirit will do is wait. The spirit will not come in and try to take over the mind again. The mind has to willingly empty its altar. The Holy Spirit is not going to try to wrestle this world away from the mind. Even if the beliefs are unreal, the Holy Spirit respects or honors them in a sense. Because the Son of God or the mind that fell asleep made them. And He has to honor that mind because of what it truly is. Friend, so he honors the source of the mind. David, yes, he honors the source of it. He honors the true power of that mind. He is a gentle reminder for that mind to voluntarily bring those beliefs to the light, or to at least question them. There is no coercion involved. There is no forcing. The ego belief system in your mind may tell you, if you follow this all the way out, if you really follow what he is saying, you could end up in dire straits because you are withdrawing all your seeming support in the world. What was before regarded as your support system, you are cutting your support system. That is the ego's interpretation of following Jesus. You are cutting your support system. All that learning we talk about. We talk about resumes, learning, and all the different things that seem to be such symbols of support you have worked so hard to build. Build it, polish it, build it, polish it, build it, as if that is your support. When you really start to follow this, you say, Wait a minute, this direction is completely the opposite. This is a 180 degree turn around. This is where the trust comes in. Where you thought something was asked of you, or you thought you were asked to sacrifice something. At one point in the Manual for Teachers, Jesus says, The teacher of God finds a happy light-heartedness instead. 
Manual Chapter 4, Section 1 The world can teach no images of you unless you want to learn them. There will come a time when images have all gone by and you will see you know not what you are. It is to this unsealed and open mind that truth returns, unhindered and unbound. Where concepts of the self have been laid by is truth revealed exactly as it is. When every concept has been raised to doubt and question and been recognized as made on no assumptions that would stand the light, then is the truth left free to enter in its sanctuary, clean and free of guilt. There is no statement that the world is more afraid to hear than this. I do not know the thing I am and therefore do not know what I am doing, where I am, or how to look upon the world or on myself. Yet in this learning is salvation born and what you are will tell you of itself. Text chapter 31, section 5 Joining the messengers of peace is like a witness or a symbol of giving your mind permission to let go of everything it believes. Knowing that it is going to be safe, though it may seem disorienting at times, like, what am I doing? Where am I? We are metaphorically holding hands and saying, yeah, that is the way it is going to seem at times. We keep gently reminding each other, Good, good, you are not nuts. You do not need to be locked up in an insane asylum. This is a good sign. The deeper you go, it seems like you, at times, are non-functional. You cannot function in the world. Good. It is another good sign.